the boat can be drowned. Tell the crew. 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 <laughs> this time in the pirate office. Hey, it's yours truly. And today we're going to do some painting. Now, step one this is something you always want to think about wear clothes. That you don't mind getting paint on. It's important. Unless you don't care, in which case, fuck it. Nevertheless, we're going to get some paint on today. Yours truly is going to create a painting. Now, I am not actually trained in how to paint. As a matter of fact, I just picked up a brush one day and said, why not? The next thing I know, I just started painting. Now, most recently, in the past year or so, I managed to actually figure out that I actually enjoy painting landscapes and stuff like that. Which I know is kind of weird, because usually most people know me for drawing boobs. But, yours truly is a renaissance man. And uh, as far as I can tell, I do okay as far as drawing landscapes and all kinds of different things. Um, not just boobs. So. Here we are, and today, we're going to draw a cabin. So yours truly is not rich. Not by any stretch of the imagination. And um, for those of you who don't know, art supplies are freaking expensive. It's a true story. And the end result is, you got to make do with what you got. And what I've found is, these little bottles here, which you can get in any craft store like Michael's or wherever. Uh, Deco Art uh, Americana. Uh, yeah, these aren't bad. These are actually pretty good paints. Uh, they're acrylics, and I use them when I'm doing any kind of, you know, painting work. Usually I like to work in acrylics. Why? It dries better and easier than, you know, uh, oils. And it's just kind of what I like to do. So it dries really quick and easy. Uh, it dries like a hard plastic when it's done, but depending on how you use it and you know how you kind of put it all together, the end result is pretty good. You know, I've been pretty successful with the painting stuff, so I'm pretty happy about that. And I don't know, I just like acrylics. I just like the way they flow. You can do things with acrylics, and I'm sure you could do things with oils too. It's just not my thing. To each their own. Nevertheless, here we are, and in this particular case, Let's get started. Now, first and foremost, what I like to do is I like to use, uh, well, in certain predicaments, in certain situations, much like this, uh, there's a lot of straight lines. There's a lot of very fine details that are all just very straight lines. So basically what I'm using is just a standard sponge brush like this. And again, I'm not classically trained. I trained myself. I picked up a pencil one day, I started drawing. I picked up a brush one day, I started painting. I just teach myself these things. Um, I picked up a digital um, bamboo Wacom tablet one day and I just started working on uh, digital art. So I just never give up. That's my big thing. I just keep on doing it almost obsessively until it becomes something. So here I am now doing this, and but per I'll be perfectly honest with you, I fucking hate doing videos. I really do. I don't like doing this in front of a camera. This is like, almost like, I don't know, taking a dump for me. It's something that should really be a private time. Bathroom time is our own. But nevertheless, here I am, and I'm going to do this and basically kind of show you how I do it. Let's go ahead and get started and let's see what we can create, shall we? Now, like I said, this is a standard palette. It's about five bucks at Michael's. And um, just your little, very simple sponge brush. And I love it because it has a really sharp edge. You see that? 
A really sharp edge is what really is going to drive this home as far as how it's uh, going to finally look. So let's go ahead and let's see what we can do, shall we? All right, now the basic idea is first and foremost what I do, I like to go ahead and I'll sketch it out on the canvas, okay? I do the, nuff, the nice rough lines, I get an idea of how it's supposed to look. I use regular number two pencil. Usually what I like to do is use blue pencil. Uh, Non-transferable blue pencil seems to work really well for me. I've always done it that way, but in this particular case I said screw it. Let's see what a regular pencil will do. It's a little easier to see uh, when I'm videotaping it and then there we go. Okay, so here we are. We have our actual standardized uh, cabin. Now this is kind of fun because it's actually not just any cabin. This is actually a friend of mine's, um, this is his cabin, this is was a dream of his, you know, to actually own his own cabin again. Uh, he's a good buddy of mine. And what we're doing is we're just basically blending in our, our paints. Now the cabin itself, I've been here a couple times, and this cabin is, is a very rustic looking cabin. It's a very um, old world cabin, and as a matter of fact, it is an old world cabin. This particular cabin is from like the early 1900s. I'm not kidding. It's early 1900s, and uh, what's pretty amazing about it is, is when he first got this cabin, my buddy, uh, we went there and we saw all the things that uh, he actually he actually was um, doing with it. Uh, but it was it was a family cabin, a kind of a getaway for the better part of almost. <laughs> Uh, close to a hundred years. I'm not kidding. And this family just basically went from generation to generation and they uh, went ahead and, and, and they created their own little life there, their own little getaway. And it was kind of glorious for them, but they just decided it was time to um, go ahead and kind of just sell it. Uh, and that's when my buddy kind of just, you know, was like, oh crap, well, don't mind if I do. So he bought it, and uh, sure enough, this became his little treasure trove. Uh, it's it's a basic way for him to get away, and uh, you know it's his own little little hideaway. So it's kind of nice. And um, again, I'm not classically trained. Why am I doing this in the first place? Well, a lot of people ask me after seeing a lot of the stuff I do as far as the um, the painting work I've been doing. This is something I just kind of kicked in. I, I didn't really intend to be a painter or an artist of any kind of nature of that. Painting is just something for me where I can just relax. Now, granted, some of my paintings have been in galleries. I've done full-on single one-man shows. Um, but for the most part, the only reason I do paintings is for me. Um, I, I really enjoy it. But it's kind of just a way of relaxing. and. When I started doing them and I started putting them on social media, people were just, they were just people were wondering what you know what led you down this road. You know, here's a guy who draws horror, and I'm a graphic novelist. I've been I've been a graphic novelist for a long time now, about a little bit over a decade, and um, people were like, "How the hell do you go from making horror graphic novels to all of a sudden just deciding, hey?" I'm going to do this. So, for a long time, people, a lot of fans of mine, have been asking, why don't you, you know, show us how you do it? And it's, for me, again, like I said, it's, it's like, you know, it's private for me. It's, it's a very private thing. So, for doing, to do this right now is, is not exactly easy for me. But the basic idea is, uh, I'm just here to show you how to do it uh, my way. Uh, or at least how I do it. I, I'm not a teacher. I, I've taught, um, but it, I'm not necessarily a teacher. So, especially when it comes to something like this, where I really just kind of let it flow, you know? I don't really have a concept of how it's done. I just basically go and, and, and just see how I do it. I just, I, that's kind of the neat thing for me, is that it becomes... Um, just as just as much a surprise to me as it is to you. I don't know how I do this. I just basically do it. Um, sometimes it's, it's just people say, uh, well, you can't do that. You've never done it before. Well, that's true. I never did. And you never do unless you do it. So 
that's basically it. I, I just... And as far as the painting stuff, like I said, I, I am not classically trained by any means. As you can see here, if you're looking at this, it, that's pretty fucking obvious to see. But the end result is it still does come out okay, so I guess I'm doing something right. Uh, I just wanted to show people how I do it. Because, like I said, people were wondering, how, how the hell do you do all this? So, here I am, kind of just doing it. Now, this particular painting, I mean, it's, it's something, you know, I was influenced by Bob Ross. Now, what's funny about that is, when I was a kid, I used to watch Bob Ross, and... I really I didn't grasp it, I guess you'd say. I didn't realize I was grasping it. I didn't realize that I would one day, you know, try to do it myself. Um, <laughs> I really didn't. This was just something where it's like, okay, you know, I can paint. Um, but sure enough, uh, Bob Ross became quite the big influence on me. And the funny way about that is... Um, it didn't start off any other way other than, hey, oh boy, we're really going to get personal on this one. I like to take baths to relax. I get a little stressy. It's a true story. And when I get stressy, I like to take a nice hot bath and just chill the hell out. And uh, I've been doing that now for quite a while, actually. <laughs> I can't believe I'm talking about this. Anyway, so I take these baths. And I needed something really relaxing to watch. So, lo and behold, there was Bob Ross on Netflix, okay? And I'm like, holy crap, Bob Ross, I remember this when I was a kid. So I started watching how he did stuff, and I sat there in the bath. <laughs> Anyways, I sat there in the bath, and I just relaxed, and I watched Bob Ross, and it became the most relaxing fucking thing in the world. So, uh, upon which, it became a learning experience. Uh, the man is extremely relaxing. He's very calming. He just has that effect. But sure enough, I was, was extremely calm by, by watching him. And, again, this is, this is just how I do it. This is, um, I really can't teach you uh, how I do this. This... I could teach you different things. I could teach you how I do um, various things in in my art. This is something completely random to me. Um, I just wanted to show people how it happens. So here we are. Now, again, the funny thing about this is uh, I had no idea I was ever going to be painting like this stuff. Um, I never had any idea I was going to be painting this stuff. Um, the idea of, you know, creating paintings that aren't uh, what I normally do. I mean, it was a way of getting me out of my comfort zone, and I just felt it was necessary, you know. Um, it just seemed necessary. It just seemed like, why not try something? And that's the thing about what I do, anything I do in my art. Uh, my design, whatever whatever it is that I do, um, the idea behind it has always been, why not? You know, I like to surround myself. Uh, who I don't remember who it was. Um, I think it was Kevin Smith, who talked about. I don't remember where it was even. It might have been an evening with Kevin Smith, but the idea behind it was, why fill your world with people who always question you uh, when you try to do something creative? You know, well, why do you want to do that? Well, why would you want to do that? You know, well, that's that's stupid. Why why would you want to do that? Don't fill your world with people like that because, quite honestly, they fuck with you. And your end result is you're you're not happy with what what they're doing because they're bringing you down. You know, and one of the things I've learned is don't hang around people who bring you down. Um, kind of be around people, fill your world with people who, you know, um, build you up, 
who can say, hey, that's awesome, man. Why not try that, you know? The end result about this beautiful thing of creativity is you can do it. You can totally do this. I'm nothing special when it comes to this. I, I just I just do it. I just do it. I don't I don't know. It's it's something for me. It became an outlet to just create and build and I just enjoy the hell out of it. So I do it myself and I just keep on going, really. I mean, this is it. Um, and this particular one, like I said, this is a buddy of mine's cabin. And just kind of getting that look right is step one. You know, I mean, he's he's got a really cool cabin, I gotta admit. I'm pretty happy that he shares that environment with me. Because I like going there, and it's just, you feel the history. I mean, I'm not kidding. When, when we first got there, and he hadn't finished um, taking out all the old stuff. Because, I mean, the people just left stuff there. They, they were like, hey, as is, you know. I mean, the actual electricity uh, is not up to code even, because the electricity was installed before there was a code. That's how old that cabin is. It's a great cabin, but it's just, you know, I mean, it's it's definitely not up to par in, a, in many ways. It's very old school, and it's kind of funny. I mean, as you look at it, and you're like, good Lord, you know, i blown my mind how uh, old world it is. But you just kind of are just amazed by, by what went into, you know, what went into something like that. I am, at least. I don't know. Now, I know it seems kind of weird the way I do this, but trust me, the end result is kind of cool. And, uh, you know, I'm a professional. So, but uh, this is really kind of the idea behind it is you just kind of keep on going on this, you know. Plus, we're going to do this in a snowy uh, motif. It's going to be a winter cabin. So don't doesn't have to be, you know, it doesn't necessarily have to be, oh my god, this has to be picture perfect right now. There's going to be a lot of snow here. And snow helps you cover things up. That's a tip from your old buddy Gio. Um, so yeah, this is going to... Is going to be how that goes. It's crazy, I know, but this turns into something really cool, which is kind of funny because looking at it right now, you're like, "What the hell is he doing?" I don't know. I just it just kind of becomes something uh, from here on in. And this is how it's done. I mean, this really is for me. So this is this is kind of the process. Um, like I said, I've been doing this now. I started doing paintings, landscape type paintings like this. Well, not just like this. This is this is. Uh, I just started doing stuff like this probably a couple months ago. Up until now, it was like really pretty landscapes, just because I wanted to see what they look like. I saw Bob Ross do it, and I said, you know, that's pretty cool. Why not? You know, again, why not? So, I just started doing it, and now I don't have the same method as he does. Now, I, I've heard this, uh, as far as I know, it's true. Um, according to his manager, I was listening to NPR one day, and they were talking about his process. The process consisted of him doing three different paintings every time he did a painting that you saw on TV. Uh, I don't have that kind of time or that kind of energy. And again, poor artist, I don't have that kind of money to be buying a shit ton of canvases. So, uh, I'm just doing this once. But yeah, he went through a whole process where, yeah, he, he 
he did that painting three times and that's a lot of not to give away his secret but that's a lot of why his art looks so so fluid and flawless because he had done it before you know over and over again so I mean that's that's just kind of interesting to me uh, that that's how it came about as far as the end result it makes it look amazing it does Makes it look really cool to, you know, the end result. But uh, <clears throat> this is pretty much step one. And then from here, we kind of just take it to another level. This gives me an idea of where. Kind of gives me an idea of the uh, specification of how that ground's going to look. Now he's got like he's got um, some cement around here, so I may or may not do that. I may decide against it, but for the time being, we'll just do that. It gives me kind of an idea of where the ground will be. So this is kind of step one. Yeah, so just me joining on and on and on, you know, yada, yada, yada. Anyhow, so the idea behind this, just to give you an idea, we ever got the snow laid down. I go with a darker, deeper blue to start off with as the base for that snow. On top of that, we put a little bit of white. It gives it that really nice highlight, but you don't just throw white on it. You have to kind of blend it in together. Give it some form, you know? And that's really a big part of it, is making that form happen. So you kind of just brush it on and kind of get it into a, a good feel of what you want it to look like. Also, if you notice there, I had tape. Blue painter's tape works really well. Uh, I had tape there to cover the areas where I didn't want to get things kind of messed up with the brown from the, uh, the wood there. So the whole process of this is... Yeah, it's kind of daunting at times, and you think sometimes, you know what, I'll never get this done. But then something happens, and you do. So then you just keep on going. That's my process, at least. There we are with the blue tape. We take that off. We start filling in a little bit on the windowsills. This is kind of tricky, because they kind of have to be a little bit more, you know, straight-edged. Sometimes it's not as easy as others, depending on how much you've had to drink. And just like that, we have a snow cabin. I added in a little snowman action right here to give it kind of a feel of, yeah, you know, some wintertime fun. My buddy really enjoyed the hell out of this. He loves it, and he can't wait to uh, actually have it in his cabin. So it's kind of funny to put something of your cabin in your cabin. I say rock on. Nevertheless, enjoy my good friend, and... Uh, I hope you enjoyed watching kind of me getting into my process a bit on uh, how to Bob Ross it, if you will. 
If you enjoyed this, go to my website, brawngraphics.com. Go ahead and like, enjoy, subscribe to my YouTube channel here, and uh, until next time, stay killer. This is your world, your creation. Mr. Sunshine.